Hello and welcome to the Should You Buy for the Nova Cat. We're going to take a look at the mech stats, its hard points, its possible hitbox locations based off of its concept art, and whether or not you should buy this mech. Now to preface this, I am a Nova Cat. I'm in Clan Nova Cat. It's this. This is our totem mech. I am super excited. It's finally in the game. Just keep in mind, I'm looking at stuff through rose-colored glasses. Uh, although there are some criticisms that I have in terms of pack structure and stuff like that we'll get to in a moment, uh, I can just say immediately I'm purchasing this mech. I don't even care what happens. I'm getting this mech as fast as humanly possible. But let us scroll down and take a look at the pack structure for these. Now, if you do want to uh, get them, you can get the collector as an ultimate reward. You can get these cockpit items that increase XP and C build boosts. Uh, but you have to get the Arctic Wolf as well. So if you get the whole package, you'll get a bunch of cool stuff. But if you just get the basic package or just the Nova Cat, not the Arctic Wolf as well, you're just going to get the. Uh, you're not going to get these bonuses. Uh, for the pricing, we have the standard pack pricing that they've been doing for a $20 standard pack, which comes with three base variants and three mech bays, a collector's pack, which adds an additional fourth mech, which is a copy of the Nova Cat Prime with 30% C-Build boost and an additional 30 days of premium time, as well as there is a hero add-on for $15 and a reinforcement add-ons with the Charlie and the Delta for $15. Now we're gonna take a look at these hero and reinforcements as these are omni mechs so we can pass around arms and torsos and if those reinforcements and heroes are pay to win or pay to, to, pay to make better, you know, that kind of thing, uh, we're just gonna check to see if that's occurring. But we're gonna go down here to the mech stats and we'll line this up nicely. Very good. And this is a 70 ton clan Omni mech with a 280 XL engine, standard armor, and endo steel. Now, one of these mechs actually has jump jets, which is really interesting. So it's like the Timberwolf, where the Timberwolf S can take jump jets off and on by switching hard points, by switching uh, Omnipods. Things like the Summoner can't do that. Every single leg of the summoner has jump jets in it. Where the Nova Cat here, the A left and right torso, you're going to be able to swap around jump jets, which makes it even that much better. So you can come, you can choose your commitments to jump jets. You can make it a ground pounder, and you can put the firepower, you have the weight into your firepower, or you can get a little bit of jumps, just get over rocks, or you can put a bunch of jumps and be a jump sniper. So great versatility there. But let's pop over to the Spreadsheet Warrior and see how the Nova Cat compares against other Omnimechs in its weight class. So we have the Nova Cat here. It's a 70 ton mech. It's got a 280 XL, which is pretty low for a 70 tonner. It's putting it at 64.8 before tweak and 69.7 after tweak. Interestingly, this is exactly the same as the Nightjear which is just five tons off. It just has a very slight uh, amount of weight less than the Nightjear, uh, but the drop in engine is directly proportional and keeps it at the exact same speed. Uh, it has endo, but no Pharaoh, so we have a little bit more space with an additional seven slots and 37.94 tons of free space. That is incredible amount of free tonnage. Now, this isn't without any jump jets, of course. So the four tons here that the Nightjear has, has the same weight. So a ground pounding Nova Cat has the same firepower as a Nightjear, which is quite impressive. The 70 tonner having this much firepower, uh, it's, it's going to be basically a really close contender for like Nightjear and Nova Cat. Uh, when you take some jump jets, this is going to go down a little bit to sort of 35 tons, maybe 36 tons, but still, it's a fair amount of firepower that this thing can take. We'll pop back here to the stats and let's go through these. Now, this is Omnimex, so you can swap parts around between them. So we're going to look at 
the base pack first, then we're going to add in the reinforcements and see what they add in your abilities to do stuff, and then we're going to add in the hero. And we're going to take a look at whether or not those are pay to win, or if there's certain play styles that you can only get from purchasing these mechs. Start off with the Nova Cap Prime, its left arm is 3 energy, its right arm is 2 energy, that's it. And very sparse on hard points, but it's an Omni, so we can spread things around and get some hard points from somewhere else. Uh, but the 3 energy in the left arm is the highest across the entire uh, chassis lineup, so it's a good arm. It's the, the, the chassis itself in a vacuum needs a little bit of extra love but uh, the individual pods are going to be quite useful and then the right arm here with two energy is very common across there's three uh, there's three mechs in this listing that have two energy in the right moving on to the alpha here the elf alpha is the only one that's got jump jets and as i explained just prior uh, two jump jets in each side torso that you can switch off which is so great um, really excited to be doing that you can choose two jump jets to just get over a rock you can choose no jump jets and have a bunch more guns you can choose all four and you can be a pop tartar it's all up to you and you should be able to pop tart just about the same if not a little bit better than a night gear. so whatever the night gear can do now in terms of pop tarting ability the nova cat should also be able to if it takes both of these side torsos the left arm here is two energy, it's not as good as the prime, but it's fine. And then two energy, pretty standard for the right arm. In the Bravo here, no jump jets or anything, but it has missiles. That's what makes this one cool. We've got three missiles in each arm for a total of six. The stock design has six Lerm 15s. It's, it's crazy. And it actually has a decent amount of Lerm ammo in it. Ten round, like ten tons of lerm ammo so that's actually kind of usable <laughs> it's, it's crazy but it actually could work as this mech three missiles in each side two energy in each side torso well, not two energy in each side torso two energy in the torsos one in each side and very nicely it's the best equal to the best torso so if they didn't have this energy in the side torso here and the hero did that would have been an issue however it's not an issue because there's something in the base pack that has those energies in the side torso which make it great so you can get some additional hard points say if you wanted to take your prime and you wanted to get a few more energy hard points out of it instead of five you can get seven that's great you can take them from the bravo now, when we're moving into the reinforcements and the hero, we start seeing some interesting stuff because the reinforcements are the only place where you get ballistics on the Nova Cat. And I think that this is a problem as the Charlie here has two energy in the left arm, that's pretty standard, we see that on the A, but it has three ballistics in the right arm. Okay, well, this mech has a lot of weight to work with. It has just shy of 40 tons to equip. You can easily get enough weight to use large ballistics, like a pair of UAC-10s, or it may not work on an arm, I'm not, a top of my head I can't remember the if that fits in terms of crit slots but easily a UAC 10 and a UAC 5 or a pair of fives or even just I can't remember triple fives works or triple twos or even a gauss rifle all these things you can't do on any of the base pack because they just don't have ballistics and with this much weight ballistics I feel are almost a requirement because there's the three different types of weapons in the game. There's ballistics, which are high weight and relatively low space. There's missiles, which are mid space and mid weight. And then there are uh, energy weapons, which can be low weight and low space. Energy weapons are perfect for light mechs and stuff like that because they can just take a bunch of medium lasers and they're good. 
the as you start getting heavier and heavier you start seeing oh your mediums maybe not take as many lasers and start taking more SRM brawler kind of stuff maybe starting to get into a ballistic but as you get higher and higher into your heavies and assaults you see more and more ballistics combined with maybe some uh, missiles or some energy weapons to round them off but it's primarily the large scale stuff is you're basing your build around maybe a ballistic because you can take these big ac20s or these dual 10s or something like that and stuff like that the fact that all the ballistics are locked into the reinforcement is kind of troublesome for this particular chassis because if you wanted to do something like Gauss dual PPC or even dual Gauss PPC, it should have enough weight for that. You cannot unless you spend an additional $15 or wait for the mech to come up for C bills. So there's going to be a significant time lag there where the only Nova Cats that can do that are people who paid additional money. Now, it's not so much of an issue when there weren't other mechs out there that could do that kind of stuff. So right now you can purchase a night gear for C bills that can do those builds in almost the exact same capacity, which I think alleviates a lot of that issue. So I think if the night gear didn't exist, I would be a lot more up in arms about this, but still it would have been nice just a little bit if one of the if like the a here had a single ballistic or something like that on one of its arms if this ballistic and energy was copied here or something like that i know it's not lore or anything but just if there was a single ballistic in the base package i would be so much happier about this but i'm going to get over it and we're going to continue going uh, for the hero mech, we've got four energy, two in each side torso, which we've already covered, is not uh, overpowered or anything, one energy in each arm, and then two missiles in each arm. And this is, you could say, strictly worse in terms of missiles compared to the Bravo, but it's just a different flavor. If you want to go Bravo, where it has six missile to energy, and emphasis on the missile, you can do it. But if you want to go the cobra cat and you can do just four missile and four energy you just you know, you're just trading two missile for two energy direct trade it's not that bad like i'm i'm totally happy with the cobra cat having these hard points here it allows for some more interesting stuff where the uh the bravo can because of crit slot problems in its arms it can't take larger missiles like atms and take three of them at once it can take big LRMs. You can take three LRM-15s. It does in its stock design. But you could go with the Cobra Cat because it's only got two missiles there. You can do stuff like a pair of ATM-9s or even just a pair of 12s. Fill out the arms completely and do some medium lasers in the torsos. It, it's interesting. So you can do basically the missile stuff on the Cobra Cat in basically the same capacity as the Bravo. So I have no issues about the Cobra Cat being pay to win or pay, it's just a little bit of pay to optimize, just a little bit. It's a pay to play slightly differently. Yeah, more more emphasis on energy weapons. But when it comes to builds for this thing, we can go for like a mass missile. We've got the Bravo here, we can do that. You can take like six missile, two energy, or if you have the hero, you can do four missile, four energy. You can get some LRMs, ATMs, whatever you want. Most likely going to be long range stuff. You're not going to take SRMs on this thing. Most likely, unless you're in like a defensive mission, like you're in a um, a siege defense. Because I this mech's too slow. I mean, with only 69.7 kph, you're not going to catching anything uh, besides maybe an, an assault mech. So that's good with the. The hero you can do something like four atm nines and four lasers of some kind and a bunch of ammo um, if you want to do the pinpoint front loaded damage like the dual goss peep or dual peep goss you're gonna need the reinforcement pack but yeah you can do it you have enough um, 
hard point space, you have enough pawn space and everything. Uh, two Goss, PPC, four jump jets, jump up in the air, do your jump sniping, because everybody loves to do that, right? You can also do stuff like um, a ground pounding laser vomit if you wish. You can get the three energy from the left arm, you can get an energy in each side torso, and you can get two energy in the right arm, which would total of four, five, six, seven. Um, alternatively, if you wish, you could trade out one of the torsos for some, maybe some jump jets in order to give yourself a little bit of extra mobility and go down to six energy hard points. Um, but you can do just basically a standard laser vomit, you know, a pair of large pulse lasers, five ER mediums, four ER mediums, depending on how many hard points you want to bring out, and, you know, fill it up with heat sinks. It doesn't have ferro, so it has a little bit extra space, which is what it's for. It's like the energy weapon primary variant for a Nightjear, where the Nightjear is all about ballistics, this thing can be all about energy if it wished. Um, of course, you can do things like just four PPCs or three PPCs if you wanted to, just a bunch of heat sinks, uh, jump snipe with that. Um, but what you could also do, if you wish, if you had the reinforcements, you could take the ballistics in the right arm, the ballistic in the left arm, and you could do like mass ballistics. You could probably do something like, uh, what? You fit three UAC 5s in one arm. I think you might be able to. You could. You have the weight for sure to do like th four UAC fives, or maybe like three UAC fives and a two, or whatever you want to do there. You could do some mass ballistic design, and with the left and right torso of the Bravo or the Hero, you could still have three energy hard points at the same time. So you could do like three UAC fives and three lasers of some kind. So you can do some sort of mass ballistic design if you wish but it requires the reinforcements so i think uh, a little bit of annoyance that the ballistics are locked behind the reinforcement but there's plenty of viable builds that you can do in the base package so not really that concerned about it would have loved to just have a single ballistic somewhere in the base package but we're going to move on from there and go take a look at the mech's uh, cockpit not the cockpit the mech's art here and it's hard points and stuff like that so the mech is very very similar to the night gear i believe but i may be mistaken in lore they were sort of designed in tandem um, i'd have to check sarna for that but it has the same issues that the night gear has it has a very high level cockpit right at the top of the mech very big shoulders that are going to be easily shot out um, hopefully those great big sort of dome type things on the shoulders are arm and not torso and the, the area where the eyes are are going to be torso that should be like what the night gear does currently um, similarly to the night gear its arms are going to be a little bit slow slung comparatively to the mech and hopefully the torso mounted hard points will be up where those eyes are and uh, will be relatively in line with the cockpit. Uh, but really, you have to jump up so high anyway with uh, jump sniping in order to have enough time after you let go of the button for the shake to go away for you to land a shot that the arms aren't really going to be an issue in terms of how low they are. I mean, if they weren't pointing down here and they're pointing straight forward, they're not that low. I mean, they're just mid torso level, maybe a little lower than that. Um, but yeah, I think it'll be fine in terms of its uh, hard point locations and its hitboxes. Of course, it's a clan mech, so you can lose a side torso with its XL engine and keep on ticking. Uh, but overall, I think this is going to be a fine mech. It's going to be a good frontliner sort of, or backliner, like a, uh, be able to just put down that fire, put down constant DPS on your opponents. And if you want to, this might be something to think about into your Faction Warfare drop decks, as if you had a Night Gear before, you can liberate 5 tons and do basically the same thing. And that would be interesting. So you can start getting a little bit, say, heavier mediums or heavier light, or maybe take your light and turn it into a medium sort of thing. 
uh, overall, I'm excited. I can't wait to play this mech because I'm biased and I'm a Nova Cat and I have to have my Nova Cat. So take my uh, criticisms and thoughts here with a grain of salt. But thank you for watching and good hunting.